that there are these mini stories, these moments of meaning embedded throughout all of our work. What happens, though, is the routines and the pressures of life lock those away often, and we subscribe to another narrative. Like, oh gosh, is it almost the weekend yet? Or we damn the bureaucracy, or we talk about a supervisor. What if we reframe that narrative and start telling these stories of impact? I'm going to give you an example. I was working with a supply chain management company here in Denver. Now, what they do is they supply small widgets that go to a manufacturing facility that then manufactures medical devices. So three steps removed from a even semblance of a human being. And I went into this hotel ballroom, and they were miserable. This group, you could just feel it. And I always say this, when you live by results, you die by results. They had a horrible financial quarter, and they were just dead inside. You could just tell, feel it. I was right after the chief operating officer just chewed them out for not meeting their goals. So I go in, and you know they're all sitting, looking at their phones. You could just feel it. And one guy even said, oh, gosh, I hope this guy's not boring. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, as speakers, we can also hear what you're saying. <laughs> so, so I'm just noticing this, and I start doing this session on purpose. And it was not going well at all. And I just stopped, and I said, why, why are you even here today? Why would you get out of bed and come here? And the supervisor was glaring at me in the back. And then a woman raised her hand, and she goes, gosh, I've never been asked that question in my 12 years here of why I'm here. And this is, this is typical throughout a lot of organizations. I've never been asked that question of why I'm here. And she goes, I just realized it last month, and I'm realizing it right now. I was diagnosed with cancer. I was in an MRI machine. I looked up at the brand of the MRI machine, and I said, I realized we distribute a widget that goes into that machine. And she said this verbatim. I realized in that moment that my job has existed for the last 12 years to save my own life. You talk about an antidote to employee disengagement. The room changed. That one story. Everybody started crowding around her. They were like, yes, this is why we're here. They started sharing stories of other places that the product went. And then they took it further. And they said, well, who are the people that are most disengaged in our workforce? And they found this is a distribution center worker, so the people that actually pack the boxes before they go out. So they went and asked them what they hated most about their jobs. And they said, the weekly safety meetings. Now, we all have our weekly safety meeting. You know, you know what I'm talking about. And they hated their weekly safety meetings. And so what these distribution center managers did was that they told the story at the beginning of every meeting of where a widget went. They brought in a customer to share the story of being diagnosed in a machine. They brought in, uh, had a video testimony. And when they couldn't do that, they simply highlighted the widget and told that story. All of a sudden, the safety meetings were packed with people who didn't even belong at the safety meeting. <laughs> because as human beings, we yearn for meaning and mattering. We want to hear those stories. Retention slowly started going up for high turnover hourly employees. Turnover started going down because you're not packing a box anymore. You're packing someone's early cancer diagnosis that could help them be around for their kids. 